Anti-cultist Alexander Dvorkin often talks about the rampant sectarianism in Russia. He also speaks of the various crimes committed by the so-called sects, about the murders, physical and sexual abuse, prostitution, fraud, espionage, and further under the criminal code. Люди утрачивают всякую самостоятельность. Они превращаются в его рабов. А человек, утративший адекватность, может сделать все что угодно. Четверть адептов совершает попытки самоубийства. Четверть адептов у него пятидесятников. Очень часто сообщается о том, что их так или иначе обнаруживают на территории закрытых военных объектов. Все это приводит, неизбежно приводит к преступности, которая собственно существует в подавляющем большинстве сект, либо потенциально существует так или иначе. Начинаются нарушения закона. Вначале меньше, потом больше, и потом уже часто и очевидная преступность, и точно совершенно нарушение всех нравственных норм. А Кришна это, это тоталитарная секта? Несомненно, тоталитарная секта с криминальной историей, которой любая мафия позавидует. Серьезно? Торговля наркотиками, оружием, там, изнасилование малолетних, там, че -че убийство, чего только нет. Let us suppose that Dworkin's words correspond to the facts, and therefore there must be some connection between the criminal situation and the rampant sectarianism mentioned by Dworkin. At a minimum, there must be numerous investigations of religious organizations and criminal charges against their leaders. So, let us match up Dworkin's information about sects with the data provided by no less competent authorities, such as prosecutors, police and the Ministry of Justice. We are to highlight a few checkpoints on the map of the Russian Federation. Here is the Archangelsk region. Back in November 2011, while in Archangelsk, Dvorkin said, This is fascinating but doesn't correspond to the data available to the prosecutor's office of the Archangelsk region. We would like to inform you that the prosecutor's office didn't receive any information about the deprivation of property, injuries, etc. associated with the activity of religious organizations. Now let us turn our gaze to the Far East. Alexander Dvorkin visited this region in May 2012. Ну, если мы говорим в процентном соотношении, не абсолютные цифры, а процентное соотношение, то, конечно, Дальний Восток самый неблагополучный регион. The law enforcement bodies of the Far East must have been shocked by Dworkin's statement. Magadan Region Prosecutor's Office wrote, The Prosecutor's Office didn't receive any applications or complaints regarding the activities of non-traditional religious movements. Another region of the Far East, the Khabarovsk area, the prosecutor's office writes, We inform you that the said information, as well as the decisions taken by the regional judicial authorities that have entered into legal force on the issues presented, are not available at the area prosecutor's office. Let's go further to the Far East. What about the Kamchatka Area Interior Department? Another discrepancy. The Kamchatka Area Interior Department has no information about family disruption on religious grounds, including due to the destructive religious organizations. The information on cases of fraud related to the property of citizens, as well as emotional trauma caused by the activities of religious organizations, is also missing. The Primoria area is also part of the Far East. There is no information on the activities of non-traditional religious movements, sects, leading to family disruption, psychic or mental injury, deprivation of property of citizens and other cases of fraud at the disposal of the Primoria Area Interior Department. Maybe it is in Sakhalin, almost at the ends of the earth, that some menacing sect has conned a citizen into its ranks, manipulating his or her mind under the veil of night instead of robbing the property and money. At least, this is what Dworkin frequently speaks about. Alas, no, the Sakhalin Region Prosecutor's Office has no information on such cases. We hereby inform that the Region Prosecutor's Office does not possess any information about the activities of non-traditional religious movements across the region, depriving people of the possibility to choose. Neither there are decisions of courts which would establish the facts of people's involvement in religious organizations against their wishes. 
Dworkin especially highlights the Amurska area. Now, not only did Dworkin call the situation severe, he put it mildly. However, this does not correspond and is not confirmed by the Ministry of Justice in the Amurske area, which states that no information on the violation of rights and freedoms on part of religious organizations has been identified. Well, maybe we are dealing with an error in measurements or some kind of abnormality even. Let us look at another checkpoint, Bashkortostan. In April 2013, Dworkin visited Ufa city, where he gave an assessment of the situation with the sects in that region in an interview with Komsomolska Pravda newspaper. Bashkortostan Republic is one of the financially independent and wealthy regions. It is known that the sects are attracted to money. They are interested in other regions as well, but the abundance of money means they can get their hands on it. Therefore, I have to admit that your region is one of the most unfortunate in terms of sectarianism. Then we decided to see how this problem is solved by the Department of Justice of the Bashkortostan Republic. But it turned out it doesn't exist. There is no information about violation of the rights and freedoms of citizens on the part of religious organizations, faith groups and newly established religious communities, as well as the relevant jurisprudence. As a result, our small research revealed no correlation between the facts provided by anti-cultist Alexander Dvorkin and the information provided by the Interior Ministry, the Prosecutor's Office and the Ministry of Justice. What is it? A confirmation of parallel universes' existence? Or maybe Dvorkin deliberately misleads the public? As a minimum, this indicates that we should not treat Dvorkin's words with confidence.